correct? Yes. Okay. And did you speak to the police officers that, are, that uh, arrived then? No, I didn't. They wanted to talk to me. I told them to get my daughter and my cousin to the hospital. Okay. So those are the initial officers that arrived. You didn't, we just told them to take care of your daughter. And my cousin. And they left. Did they not shortly after? Correct? One of them did. One of them did. And the other officer stayed? He was trying to get crowd control. He was, he was, he was doing crowd control, backing everybody up. Okay. And were there other officers besides that one officer? When the rest of the officers got there, they was putting me on the stretcher to take me to the hospital. Okay. So when the other officers arrived, you, the ambulance had already shown up or the EMS had shown up? The officers got there before the ambulance showed up. Okay. This is the extra officers, okay? Do you understand? Uh, maybe I'm not being clear. Let me, let me, uh... Uh, you said initially two officers arrived? Two officers arrived on scene in two separate cars. Okay. One officer took, rushed my baby to the hospital. The other officer stayed there to do car control. Okay. And Can I stop you right there? Uh, now, did other officers arrive after that? Yes. Okay, were they uh, uh, city of Inkster officers or were they state police? or were all uh, city of Inkster police officers. Okay. And how long after your daughter was taken to the hospital did these other uh, officers arrive? Uh, as soon as he pulled up, they had pulled up. Okay. And so I understand that you were saying that you didn't speak to any police officer about the events of this uh, that just occurred while you were still at that address. There was a female officer that came to the back of the ambulance when they put me in the ambulance and I spoke with her. How long did you speak to her for? I told her who it was and who done it. Okay. And what kind of car. And so was it exactly as fast as you like you're telling me right now? You just told her that information and was that it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. And you didn't speak at any length with her. You just told her that information. Is that yes. correct? Yes, okay. sir. Now you were taken to uh, Oakwood, is that correct? Oakwood, Maine, and Gilbert. Okay. And you spoke to the police officers, some police officers there, is that correct? I spoke to A officer, detective. Okay, A officer, you say? Detective. Okay, and do you remember that detective's name? Munson. Munson? And Munson. Munson? Detective Munson. Detective Munson, thank you, sir. Now, uh, how long have you been at the hospital that Detective Munson came and spoke with you? He was there probably like 15 minutes after I had arrived. Okay. And how long did you talk to Detective Munson, if you remember? They was taking me through x-ray and I gave him my statement. So it was approximately 10, maybe 15 minutes. Okay. You used the term I gave on my statement. Did, it, did they write something down and have you sign? Record it. Okay, you recorded it. Okay. And after, did you see uh, Detective Munson then uh, any time later that day? No. The state police special agents, the special agent detectives came in and they took over from there. Okay. And that was that same day, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you remember any of those uh, uh, troopers' names? No, I don't. Okay. Um, so how long after you been at the hospital that the state troopers came? They was there probably like an hour later. Okay. And I really, they was trying to prep me for surgery, so they came back the next day. Okay. So, but did you speak to them briefly that time? At when they, you spoke to them briefly before you were prepped for surgery? I don't remember. Now, when was the next time you spoke to a police officer? When I came out of surgery, when I talked to the assistant prosecutor. And was that the next morning, the next day? When I woke up from my surgery. Okay. Um, so if I'm, if I'm to understand you correctly, did this all happen within the same 24-hour period or did this happen like a day later? I'm not sure. I didn't, I lost track of time. Okay. Um, 
Well, when, when you saw Miss Paul, was that the next day? I'm reckoning it was. Okay, you, you believe it was? Yes. Okay. Now, after you spoke with Miss Paul, okay, did you speak to any other officers at any point in time after that? Only ones came in with, with the state, the state police detectives. Okay, was that after Miss Paul or before Miss Paul? Oh, they came in with her. Okay. Um, now you were made aware today that we were aware that uh, your statement was being recorded. Yes, I was. Okay. And did you have a an opportunity to uh, to review your statement the the uh, before you testified today? No. Okay. Have you reviewed any materials? Uh, have you reviewed any materials uh, before uh, testifying today? No. Okay. Now, you mentioned something earlier about a Facebook page. Yes. Okay. Um, that was after, you saw after the shooting, right? That was after the shooting, yes. Okay. And when was the last time before this uh, incident that you saw Mr. Hearn? I mean, we're not, uh, we're not, we know that you saw over at Michigan and know, know about We're not talking about that. But when you actually saw him and you say have a conversation with him? No, I had a conversation with him, but it was like a week before, maybe two. And mm -hmm. I asked him, was he all right? Because he asked me, was I? And I'm like, yeah, I'm all right. Are you all right? He said, yeah. I say that's what's up. Okay. And so when you're using the term, so, so I understand, are you all right, am I right? Are you, were you asking, do you have any problems with me? Is that what you're saying? No, I was oh. asking about his well-being. Oh, it's just kind of the same, hi, how you doing? Yeah. Yeah, and he said, okay, and it was sort of a, you know, some very casual sort of thing yeah, that you do. He was standing outside talking to my brother. Okay. And since this time he was, the, the shooting uh, you talked about that happened earlier this year, okay, uh, how many times have you seen him after that? That was really my first time seeing him. Just a few weeks before? Yeah. Okay. I have no further questions. Can you read the rest? No, Your Honor. Mr. Frank, we're going to assist you in stepping down. Let's get this one more. Hey, Your Honor. All I need to do is just get to my wheelchair. I'm cool. Okay, I think it's, um, it's, 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 it's all fun. It's like that. I don't want anything to happen to you. So just let us know if we can get you Yes, Your Honor, there are two exhibits that I'm going to move to admit at this time. Okay. Your Honor, I've marked as exhibit number one, which I'm moving for admission of, a certified copy of conviction for Raymond Bernard Jackson. Uh, this document is a certified copy of conviction showing that the defendant was previously convicted of a specified felony and was therefore ineligible to possess a firearm uh, back on July 1st, 2014. I Any objections to the admission of one? No objection. Number two, Your Honor. Thank you. Number two, Your Honor, is a certified copy of conviction for Raphael Daniel Hearn. This evidence is a conviction of a specified felony, making the defendant ineligible to possess a firearm back on July 1st of 2014. Any objections? No objections. For example, now we need to select the date to come back. Thinking well, Your Honor, I, I do think that we should move to bind over as to Mr. Jackson at this time. Okay. I understand over objection that the court is going to be referring Mr. Hearn for competency. Uh, we would have to make the motion for bind over as to Mr. Hearn at that time. 
I would ask that the court expedite the evaluation. I, I will do that. I, Thank I will you. Do that. We'll do an expedited time to see. Now, you've requested consolidation of the cases. That's the correct. Over is, the find over is to Mr. Jackson only. At, at this time, and we'll move to bind over okay. as to Mr. Hearn right. at our next date. Right. Your Honor, Mr. Jackson is charged with first degree murder, torture, assault with intent to murder, Chelsea Lancaster, assault with intent to murder, Kenneth French, felonious assault, Tony Holt, and felony firearm and felon in possession. The evidence in this case is that the defendant, Mr. Jackson, was driving a white vehicle. Mr. Hearn was the passenger. They passed by Carlisle. You heard testimony that Mr. Jackson began to get agitated. He said, I'm going to let me go kill this and gets out of the car. Raphael Hearn then jumps into the driver's seat of the white car. That car then drives around the apartment complex. Mr. Jackson then walks past Sinitra Smith, actually takes note of her, nods his head to her, and begins to walk towards Mr. Kenneth French, the person that he just stated that he was going to kill. As he walks up to Mr. French, now Ms. Smith is in the best position to see what's happening with the individuals on the porch. He walks up, baby Kamaya French is playing on the ground in the grass, he turns to her, shoots her point blank in the head, a bullet goes through her eyeball, exits her the back of her head. He then turns the gun, and this all happens very quickly, on Mr. French, shoots him nine times, and Chelsea Lancaster is collateral damage. Chelsea Lancaster is on the porch with him. Obviously the doctrine of transferred intent applies to Chelsea Lancaster. It was a choice. It was a choice to turn the gun on Kamaya. It was a choice to turn the gun on Mr. French. There's no question in this case that this is a first-degree murder case. As to the torture count, the defendant made a knowing and purposeful choice to fire on Kamaya French Groves. She was down in the grass playing in front of him. He was <coughs> up on the porch. Mr. French was up on the porch. It was a choice to turn the gun on her. And any person who fires on a child does so in front of that parent with the intention of exacting extreme emotional distress on that parent. And that's exactly what Mr. Jackson did. I think the court should bind over as to torture as to Mr. Jackson. We're also charged assault with intent to murder for Chelsea Lancaster and for Kenneth French. What I stated previously supports the bind over as to those counts. Ms. Holt, it's interesting that Ms. Holt, she's sitting right beside Mr. French. She sees the gun. She's obviously terrified. You saw her testimony in court today. But this just evidences the defendant's intent to kill Kamaya and to kill Kenneth and to kill Chelsea because he spared Tony. He shot the children that were closest, closest to Mr. French. As for felon in possession, the defendant was a convicted felon at the time of these crimes. Therefore, he should be bound over as felon in possession and obviously felon, felon in firearm for all the other felonies. They moved to find over. Thank you. <clears throat> In brief response, uh, the testimony conflicts as to who was shot first. The uh, court has before it uh, the rendition of a witness who was down the street who had no particular reason to be paying attention to uh, this particular situation whatsoever, as opposed to the testimony of Mr. French, who um, was directly in front of uh, Mr. Jackson at the time that these allegations are said to have occurred. Mr. French, who directly indicated that he was shot first. Mr. French, who, um, uh, excuse me, Miss Holt, who indicated that uh, she wasn't sure who was shot first. Um, with regards to first degree murder, Judge, I would assert that the proofs bear out no more than second degree murder. With regards to um, uh, the torture, uh, the proofs are totally deficient of a showing that uh, there was some conduct on the part of the uh, the defendant that went over and above uh, those acts necessary to commit crime. I think for torture to exist, you have um, a heightened type of, uh, of circumstance. For instance, if if I were to uh, 
put my hands around your throat and take you to the point where you pass out you come back to life I do it again um, you know but if I were just to strangle you that wouldn't be torture you know it, it there is nothing in this record that meets the elements of torture as I know it um, and I would ask the court to dismiss this to that count No, Your Honor, only if there are questions from the court. Okay. Uh, court, having heard testimony of several witnesses in this matter, does find that there's a question of fact. Uh, with regard to count six, I think by stipulation, uh, the question of the fact that uh, he was, in fact, a felon who possessed a firearm. With regard to the assault, the felony assault, as well as assault with intention of murder, the testimony is that Mr. Jackson approached the victims and essentially open a fire uh, in their uh, evidence on this record of, some, uh, of multiple gunshots to multiple areas of the body. The court will bond over on the house charging. As to count seven, uh, it's alleged that he did have a gun in the commission of those felonies and did find over with regard to that. Uh, with regard to the homicide, uh, I believe that there is evidence on this record that Mr. Jackson was in a vehicle, saw the victim, uh, and uh, was saw him from a, a, a car, got out of the car, walked towards him, was greeted by the victim, and then uh, made the decision to uh, begin shooting. Uh, and this court finds that a prior fact uh, could indeed find that that was evidence of premeditation. But you got with regard to the torture. It's alleged that this shooting took place outside the home where there were children playing as the defendant approached. That the defendant approached, uh, certainly had the opportunity to view children in the area uh, and then shot a two-year-old uh, in front of her parents. I think that a trier of fact will be able to, based upon the evidence that this court has heard, determine there's some evidence, there is some evidence that that would be considered torture. Mm -hmm. The testimony of, of all the witnesses is sufficient for those charges to go forward to a trial of fact and will find the defendant over as charged on the counts containing the complaint and warrant. He will appear for arraignment on July 23rd. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank Our you, Judge. There is no bond. I'm sorry, no bond. And with regards to Mr. Kern, we are going to order an expedited competency. Can you ask for competency only, counsel? Yes. Okay. We're going to do an expedited competency exam. And uh, if the attorneys can come back for a competency hearing as well as a find over decision. Oh, and or a find over decision. Uh, how about August 27th? 90 days. One moment, Your Honor. That gives us yeah, see, I, I'm six weeks. I'm starting a trial that, that, that I'm fairly confident is going to go in the Third Circuit. The 26 would be the 26 would be okay. I mean, we're not talking. The special it's a special prosecutor, right. so we, the 26 is the only date I'm not not available. Okay. okay. Let's go over into that. End of September. Can we August 18th, Your Honor. I'm out of town. I'm nervous about that date. I'm out of town. Okay. No, I was just going to say I don't want to go have a report. I'm I'm looking at six weeks. Uh, so Even with the expedited, I'm still. I'm sure a phone call the court from the court can get it done. I'm going to push it. Thank you. I'm so going to push it sooner than that. Uh, September 4th? October 5th. September 4th is good for the people. We'll see all parties back. September 4th. Now, that's our. What time are, are you going to be here? Whenever, the court, whenever you need me here, I'll be here.
We'll see you back at 11. That's our civil docket day. Yes, sir. Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Also, can we clear the courtroom? Okay, clear the courtroom.